I found my dream dress recently. I haven't tried it on. I want to go to LA and try it on. It is like $8,000 because it's a custom dress and it is the most stunning thing ever. I'll show it right here. I'm a 2024 bride who's trying to bring some transparency to the financial part of planning a wedding. Going into planning, we set a budget for 25,000 that looked realistic to us. And by our surprise, we are about to ring in at about 40,000. Back in 2016, me and my husband took out a $20,000 loan in order to help pay for our wedding. Okay guys, this is my $35,000 wedding update. We are 36 days out exactly from the wedding last week i said that we were good we had enough money for the for the wedding for the honeymoon we were on cloud nine and then just a couple days ago we were talking about how we might have to cancel the honeymoon because we might not have enough money when we're looking at a location outside of the u.s it's going to be more expensive right so right now our honeymoon is costing us six thousand dollars if it wasn't for women the wedding industry would be completely bankrupt guys don't wake up in the morning all fired up and excited about planning for a wedding women do this is about our twenty thousand pounds worth of debt so sit down brace yourselves while i tell you what's in it i don't even want to know myself when i look into it so we've got about eleven twelve thousand pounds worth of loan that's for our wedding that we got married in 2022 both of us say now like if it was to do it again we just wouldn't do what we did the problem was i had a really good wedding planner and i told her everything that i wanted and then she came back and she was like right that's sixty thousand pound all that like, what but to be fair, I got it down and we ended up paying like, I think about £28,000 for our wedding, which is like an awful lot of money, but I've heard people spend so much more on their weddings. So yeah, we've got £12,000 left to pay on our wedding. And then, then we've got like £7,000 worth of credit card debt between us both, but they're both a 0%, so I'm not as bothered about them. And then another impulsive buy last year, we have got the lovely sofa that I'm sat on that we still haven't paid for yet. And then I booked a holiday and we didn't have the money to pay it off at the end of the month and 12 months later we still haven't paid it off this is how rancid the wedding industry can be from 2018 to 2020 i spent twenty thousand dollars on one specific wedding professional educational group i was sucked in it was sparkle and glitter i hate being responsible i had the same plan i was like yeah alone for a wedding of course that's how everyone pays it right if you don't have parents excuse the dog in the background my neighbor's dog if you don't have parents that's going to pay for the wedding, you got to take that alone. That's just how it goes. What is wrong with us? Why are we willing to take out 20K, 10K plus loans for an event? I don't care if I sound misogynistic or whether people say that I hate women. This is exactly why women were not allowed to have a bank account until 1974. And this is also why, to this day in some countries, even if they can have a bank account, they still need a male co-signer to open a bank account or to take out a loan because they make very bad financial decisions. They make bad decisions anyway. All the previous couples have this huge wedding debt simply because the woman pressured the man to have a big wedding ceremony. If there is one financial regret I have in my almost 30 years of living, it would be spending $30,000 on a wedding. The wedding industry has all of us girlies in a chokehold, making us feel like we need to prove something to everyone around us and have this massive, expensive, beautiful wedding. I fell under that and became brainwashed and went from eloping and having something casual and under 5k to having this 30k wedding in San Francisco with only 50 people. At the end of the day, I look back at this and I think about how much of that money I could have used for something so much more valuable. Raise your hand if you recently got married and feel broke. <sighs> All my savings are gone and I even had to tap into my emergency fund is killing me. It's giving me so much anxiety. I'm just like, I have to start at zero. So for all the 2024 brides, yes, spending the money is worth it. You will have an amazing time, but be mindful of the fact that it's just 24 hours. And after those 24 hours, you need to figure out <laughs> how to live life on a budget because girl, the way I'm going to be window shopping for the rest of the year. Yeah. Are weddings a scam? No, but here's what I learned after spending 15 plus thousand US dollars on mine last weekend, but it meant that our budget grew to 
double, not a little bit, not 75%, 25%, no, by 100%. And that hit hard. Honestly, I already spent almost 3K in just getting my glow up for that day. At the end, nobody cares how often you change. What people care about is if they had fun or not. Guys, do you know why the wedding ceremony is so important for women? Let me tell you why. Attention is women's most important currency. The wedding day and more specifically, the wedding ceremony are the moments where women get the most attention in their entire lives. There will never be another time and place where they get that much attention. College graduation ceremonies are not even close because they have to share the stage with other people. But on their wedding day, they will get so much attention from so many people at the same time and in their entire lifetime. That's why the wedding ceremony is so important to them. I don't know if people talk about wedding regret. It really was the best day of my life, but that doesn't mean that I don't have room for other emotions too. One thing that's particularly taboo to talk about is money regrets. In the US, it is wild how expensive the wedding industry has become. I live in California and between inflation and the wedding industry just charging more, a standard wedding on the coast of the US can easily run you over $100,000. And I'm not even talking like an over the top wedding. I am talking a standard wedding. I got married in January and our wedding was actually in South Africa because my husband is South African. And even though the dollar is so much stronger there, I still have financial regrets with how much we spent and specific aspects that I should have just scaled back. An example is the furniture that we had to hire in for the cocktail hour slash pre-drinks, whatever you call it. I opted for the highest end, most expensive furniture. It looked beautiful, but did I need to spend money on like the highest tier of furniture when to be honest on my wedding day, I didn't even notice it. I recently heard that some people were going into debt for their weddings I don't know I didn't know that was a thing where like a decent wedding low-key can cost like 20,000 and I feel like that's I mean it's a decent budget but it's not a ton of money and it's not like no money you know what I'm saying I recently saw a girl on TikTok talk about her dream wedding dress this is a bride on a huge budget I see all these weddings on TikTok and I'm just like this is really overwhelming and I just don't have a budget for this. So it gets really depressing sometimes. I found my dream dress recently. I haven't tried it on. I wanna go to LA and try it on. I reached out to them through an email just to kind of get a good idea of how much it is. I, I, it's just not in my budget. I just can't afford that. It is like $8,000 because it's a custom dress and it is the most stunning thing ever. I'll, show it right here it's stunning eight thousand dollars for a wedding dress i am one thousand percent sure that it doesn't take one hundred dollars to make that dress and do you guys know what is the biggest scam in the wedding industry it was convincing women that they can only wear that wedding dress one time and they make the hemline so big that it dries on the floor and gets dirty that way women cannot wear it again or even resell it damn man eight grand for a dress that doesn't cost one hundred dollars to make I think I am in the wrong business. Back in 2016, me and my husband took out a $20,000 loan in order to help pay for our wedding. And every single time that I bring it up, TikTok has something to say about it. So if you're curious, this is the full story. Me and my husband got engaged back in 2015 and we were working full time in the fitness industry and we were fully aware that our parents were not going to be helping us financially with our wedding, but we got engaged and we decided that we were just going to figure out how to come up with over $45,000. We were also completely ignorant of our financial situation and we decided that whatever we weren't able to save in the year and a half time that we were engaged that we were just going to take a loan out for the rest. During the time that we were engaged, we had a lot of unfortunate financial circumstances happen to us. And on top of that, we weren't really financially savvy people. So in the end, we were unable to come up with all the money. So we did go to our local bank and got a personal loan. That personal loan was incredibly easy to obtain. We had great credit. We had great employee history and we also made decent money. But that was also the catalyst to our current financial situation because it was the first time that me and my husband actually took a cold hard look at what our financial life was like and that pushed us into the direction that we're in right now. 
We had so many goals and so many things that we wanted to achieve financially, and that was just not going to be possible living the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle that we had been up until that point. So although I would never recommend anybody to ever take out a loan, and this is not financial advice, it was the exact moment that my husband and I realized that something needed to change. And Guys, do you see how she's trying to deflect the blame away from herself? Nobody put a knife to her throat to force her to have an expensive wedding. And no. I don't blame the guy. I blame her 1000%. Guys don't wake up in the morning all fired up and excited about planning for a wedding. Men only do it to make women happy. You see, here is where men and women are so different. When men want something, the first question that we ask ourselves is how much is it going to cost? If the price is not reasonable or not affordable, most of the time we decide to live without it. Women, on the other hand, never stop to ask themselves if the price is reasonable or affordable. Men ask themselves how we're going to pay for it. Women ask themselves who is going to pay for it. As long as the expense makes them feel good, that's all they care about. They only focus on how they feel, which is why they make very bad financial decisions. I am absolutely like so frustrated by the wedding industry it is literally the wedding industry is price gouging it's so inflated just like everything else is my 2024 bride who's trying to bring some transparency to the financial part of planning a wedding going into planning we set a budget for twenty five thousand that looked realistic to us and by our surprise we are about to ring in at about forty thousand there are so many people who judge and say you know this is irresponsible we didn't know that this was gonna happen. It creeps up on you, there's so many hidden costs and part of the reason I'm making this video right now is to show people where all that's coming from and why it's so much so that people can avoid this if they want to or at least have knowledge that I didn't have when I was planning one. One of the biggest costs that you'll encounter is the dress. So I had to make two different deposits for this one that were both almost $1,000. And that is including alterations, which was a deal. So I did still get a deal there. Obviously our venue, we had to split this out. It was three sets of 4,200. So total, obviously we are paying about, I think it was like 12,500. And that was including like tables, chairs, um, linens, decorations, a lot of the stuff is being done by the venue and that was an extremely good deal for that price. So that's something to note. And here is probably the thing that people don't realize is your vendors are what are gonna cost you most. This is an insane price for how many guests we have. We have about $400 for a cake and all like cupcakes and everything. That's an insane amount for what we're getting. So then this, 25,000 so I'm like okay like we didn't go over budget well I remembered that we had to pay all the second halves of the deposits and these are what's left on all of these things so we do have things in there like our damage deposit which we will hopefully get back um, and once we tally all of that up that is what we have left to pay which is kind of an insane amount and that's how quickly you can roll into $40,000. All these people that are judging, if they have attended any wedding that is in like a normal venue and food was served to them and they got to drink drinks at the bar, I need you to know that that wedding cost probably at least $25,000. It is almost impossible to get anything under like 20K right now. Men don't care about expensive weddings. And to keep it real with you, men don't really care about wedding ceremonies, but we still do it just to make the women happy. If it wasn't for women, the wedding industry would be completely bankrupt. Men don't sit around in the late 30s, all depressed because they are not married yet. Women do. Guys never wake up in the morning all excited and fired up about planning for a wedding. Women do.